This is the 32 inch Komodo Komodo with the optional side tables. Are you curious what all the pieces and components are? Well, yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm trying to take as much video and pictures as I can of this because I know it's never gonna look like this again. <laughs> So there's the, the body of the 32 inch Komodo Komodo. So this is the heat shield and then you can put a gas attachment to light the charcoal that sits here. Uh, and then this is another heat shield and this is where the air comes in. So the adjustments in the front, those, that's where they go. And then those of you that are familiar with Komodos, uh, this is essentially the firebox. So the Komodo Komodo uses a, a two-piece firebox and it's literally just sitting there right now. But what happens is over time, as this thing expands, these, these two pieces of the firebox get wedged in there. Like I haven't done it, but I could probably pick these up and out of here if I wanted to. Um, but once they've been this has been fired and those are wedged down there you, you just don't want to mess with it you just don't even touch it anymore um then what else can i show you in here these little lips here are what the grates sit on so this is the bottom grate this is the main grate and as you know there's another grate that sits on top of the main grate this is for the rotisserie uh, so the rotisserie can plug right into there it's actually spring loaded um, so that you can slide that side in and then the other side this is where it turns so the motor on the other side turns this and then this turns the spit what else can I show you in here those lines that you see are expansion joints because even refractory cement cracks um, so this controls the, the cracking and directs it to a certain place. It's, you know, uh, cracking that does not compromise the, the cooker itself. Um, but good practice is to crack it where you want it to crack. Um, and as I said, that's not compromised in any way. I believe this is probably the anchor to the spring. And then you can also see it's the serial number for, for my particular grill. Um, man, I can't stop looking at this thing. And then, of course, the, the rubber seals um, that attach, or sorry, that are pressed into this. So there's, you know, the rubber seals seal against this surface here. And then newer, on, on the newer Komodo Komodos, is this gorgeous stainless steel band. Um, Dennis made some improvements through the pandemic because he had new invent, you know, no old inventory. Um, so if you put a, you know, if you have a, a grilling tool or something here and you smash this down on it, which I can't imagine doing that, but it happens. Um, this is going to protect your, your grill. So nothing will happen to your, to your, uh, tiles and so on. So you can see the gorgeous tiles there. All right, I'm going to fire this thing up and give it its inaugural firing. There's a couple of things I missed uh, describing, and I might as well do it while this thing looks gorgeous and clean and beautiful. Um, this is a porthole, and it doesn't have the, the bung in there, but it's a porthole for your uh, therm, you know, your thermocouples or, or your thermometers. So, you know, the wires can go through there. There's another one on this side. This is what they look like on the outside. So they're, even these are beautiful, of course. And then the other thing is the cold smoking attachment here. So uh, this is what your cold smoker will attach to. That's what it looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like on the outside. 
And so that cold smoker can sit there and you can, uh, you know, smoke cheeses and things that need to smoke at a extremely low temperature and provide the cooker a nice clean smoke that, that won't imbibe any kind of bitter uh, aftertaste. So one last look before <laughs> it starts getting black. Um, yeah, there's an inside look at the, the dome and the, um, the screw. Yeah, that's actually probably something. So <clears throat> I've got pictures of the top. There you can see the bottom of the top. So you will, yeah. And then um, this screw, huge stainless steel screw, screws right through this and that's how you make your adjustments. You can imagine that through that lip there, uh, airflow comes in or leaves. Yeah, it's a chimney effect. So airflow leaves, it's coming in obviously down through there. And I guess another thing I should mention is one of the things that makes this so efficient is that the air path has to go through the charcoal. Uh, so that makes it really efficient. Um, and because of all this crazy insulation, it doesn't need that much airflow to maintain temperature. Okay, so I'm, am I, am I procrastinating? <laughs> um, well, maybe a little. But this is the basket splitter. So this is a, an accessory. Because this charcoal basket is huge. Look at that thing. I mean, they put my, <coughs> put my hand in here to give you an idea of the depth of it. Um, because this thing is so big, uh, you know, what I've seen and what's been written is that if you fill this up, it'll go at 230 for like 85 hours. Well, I don't cook for 85 hours often, um, but it's awfully nice to have a hot zone and a cool zone. You can sear and go low and slow if you want. Um, these grates here will hold heat deflectors if you want to um, put a heat deflector on there. In fact, let me take that off. Mine's a little bit spring-loaded for some reason. Um, but with this heat reflector, I can, you know, put another one of these down and reduce my basket to 25%. I can, I'm going to put mine at 50% um, since I'll be cooking for a good while here. I probably don't need it. Frankly, I could use a quarter basket, but what the hell. Um, and then, you know, obviously, I can pull this extremely this looks like a little plate on the on the video here but it's like everything else it's heavy um and this really nice it's almost like a corrugated plate um here let me see if you can see that a little better yeah it's got like little corrugations in it it slides along those this like tubes that slide along this uh this bar here but you see it functions really nicely. I mean, I can push this right along here. Um, boom, there's 75% um, basket use. As I said, I am not going to do that. Um, I may even, I might be talking myself into going 25% because I know for just the first burn-in, I probably don't need a half basket. Um, so... <laughs> This is the collection of stainless steel that's, you know, I think Dennis says it's 128 pounds of stainless steel. And I've got some additional stuff here. That's the, the rotisserie. Um, oh, hell, I should show that to you while everything is beautiful. Let's see if I can grab it here. So I mentioned this is spring loaded. So this end goes in there. You see how it it pushes that in. Well, when it pushes that in, it means that this side, which see how it can't clear right now, push it in, it clears it. And then that sits perfectly on, on this uh, part here that spins. So when the motor is in there, it's not in there currently. When the motor is in there, it spins this, that spins the rotisserie and it just spins on this side so let me pull back here oh is that beautiful or what i mean <laughs> it's like no wonder 
I mean, it's just so over the top, but this thing is just gorgeous. I, I did buy the reducing baskets because you're like, holy smokes, like, what are you going to put in there? A small child? No, I'm not doing that. Um, but a small pig, I could. I could put a bunch of chickens in here. I can put whatever I want in here. Um, but this basket's awfully big, so I also bought an attachment that reduces this down to a 10 inch and a six inch so you could even put a little tiny chicken in here if you wanted to um more on that later so yeah that's the the rotisserie all right so here's my collection of stainless steel and because this is never going to look this clean and beautiful again and yes, I'm procrastinating putting charcoal in it and making it all black, which is what it's supposed to look like, but this looks so, so beautiful right now. I'm gonna load it up so you can see all the, the grates. So this is the bottom grate. And I don't know if it counts as exercise it's moving these things, but it's, it's not light, um, but holy smokes, look at the thickness. I mean, that's my finger. It's three eighths of an inch thick, which is just crazy. Um, because Dennis thought of everything, you know, there's also this little trap door here. So I can get access if I need to load some more smoking wood, charcoal, whatever. <clears throat> but this thing just feels like it was made by NASA. I mean, just crazy. Um, that's the lower grate. So here's the main grate. Oh, it's just like a glove. How do you guys do it? Um, and because no expense is spared, yeah, here's another little door. So you can get access to this one in case you're <clears throat> maybe putting a drip pan or whatever. Who knows, right? There's always stuff that comes up. This has got you covered. Um, this is a half moon. You can imagine hot zone, cool zone. And so let's say I didn't have this guy here. Um, this could be my second level. It could be warming something up. Um, and then this could, you know, this could, uh, if this wasn't here, I could have something low and slow or i mean there's just so many options and i think that's why this has become one of the most popular sizes um of the komodo kamado because there's just so many options of what you can do um so okay let me pause there so i gave this a good think um and you actually can move the charcoal splitter the other way but I started thinking if I wanted to do something low and slow and maybe sear something at the same time, I mean, you wouldn't have optimal searing here because it's a low and slow fire, right? But let's say you want to cook at two different cooking temperatures. Maybe that's the better way to say it. Um, I actually moved the charcoal basket around because I think you'd want your cool side here you can see the charcoal baskets covered on that side. And then here, you can see I've got the, the flame there and it's set up for 25% right now. Obviously I could go half, um, but you'd have a nice searing area here. So yeah, super versatile as I was saying. I think that's why this is proving to be such a popular size. All right, so there was one last thing I didn't show you. So this is the main grate, but that's not enough. You gotta have a super duper top grate that's like your, oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. <clears throat> that's like your, your pizza grate. Let me, let me show you this whole thing. <clears throat> oh, my goodness so this is you know where you can put your pizzas the the nice thing and i haven't seen this from other uh kamado um 
companies is that this puts the pizza way up high in the dome, which means you're gonna get a really nice ability to cook the top of your pizza, but not burn the bottom of your pizza because fire is way down there. Um, so you get all that heat, you got a nice hot pizza stone that's got some good mass to it to give you a nice crispy crust, but it still cook the top of your, your pie. So nice. So I showed you some of the things on the outside, like the temperature probe, where those go. These guys come out and then there's a little rubber bung that you can put in here and it fits perfectly with your, your probe wires. Um, but that's just a nice way to, I don't have the dexterity to do that. Um, this is the cold smoking attachment. And then I don't think I showed you this. This is if, if you have a uh, automatic temperature controller, which I've got the Thermoworks billows on the way. So you just, you can pop that sucker in there and the fan unit will control this. I've mentioned this in other videos, but Here's a view of how you can adjust temperature. I like the little lines because, you know, if you're like me, you're like, oh, okay, you know, smoking low and slow, maybe here, and maybe a steak is here, but the lines give you a nice um, point of reference. And because this thing doesn't need a lot of airflow, I mean, look at this. You can even put a little from this huge guy all the way down to this little pinhole guy and if you're really trying to start your fire fast this whole thing pulls out and one-handed maybe a little more difficult to pop it in but it goes in and then that gas attachment um, you can slide right in there if you choose to do that I think this thing's so easy to to do and then I did get the optional side tables. Those attach right there, and I know you can see those. These babies are teak, so they're like everything else, you know, a nice, thick, robust, super well-made, like everything else on here. So that is your tour of the 32-inch Komodo Komodo.